true astronomy began in the Middle East. From 4000 BC, on towering ziggurats, the Babylonians charted the rising and setting of the sun. They grouped stars into patterns or constellations. They understood the cycles of the sky. These ancient observers knew that the sun, the moon and the planets moved against the background stars. The planets, as so-called wandering stars, made loops in their paths across the sky. With the sun and the moon, the planets traveled through the same band of the heavens. The Babylonians named it the Zodiac. From Taurus the Bull, the Zodiac passes through 13 constellations. To this day, 12 of them survive in popular astrology. But these mythical figures depict real star patterns. The Chinese kept the longest continuous observations of the sky. From 4,000 years ago, they charted celestial movements with meticulous detail. They made an accurate calendar and star maps like this. The ribbon is the Milky Way. Eclipses of the sun were probably first recorded in China. Sunspots were observed by naked eye. The Chinese saw the northern lights, the aurora borealis. And they were the first to record Halley's Comet, which appears every 76 years. Chinese tomb drawings depict comets as broom stars because of their tails. The Egyptians created our calendar of 365 days. It was 3000 BC, time of the pyramids. Water was precious in this desert land, but the Egyptians knew that the first dawn rising of the dog star Sirius heralded the flooding of the Nile. Irrigation could begin and the annual harvest secured. The Egyptians, experts in heavenly cycles, believed they were controlled by gods. Supreme homage was paid to the sun god Ra. Such ideas thrived until 500 BC. Then came the Greeks. Aristarchus of Samos said the moon shone by reflected sunlight. He was right, but his idea that Earth circled the sun was ahead of its time. Instead, it was thought crystal spheres carried the stars, the sun and other bodies around Earth. As the mistaken notion of Aristotle, it persisted for 17 centuries. Another Greek, Hipparchus, compiled the first star catalogue in the Western world, and he compared the brightness of stars. In North Africa, the Greek Eratosthenes had read of this well at Syene. At noon on Midsummer's Day, he knew the sun shone directly down the well. But north in Alexandria, also at noon on Midsummer's Day, Eratosthenes observed a column casting a shadow of seven degrees. Using the discrepancy, Eratosthenes proved Earth was round. Simple geometry gave him a circumference of 40,000 kilometers. Eratosthenes was correct. Ptolemy was not. Ptolemy was troubled by the backward loops of planets in their motions across the sky. He explained them with epicycles, the planets dancing circles on their orbits of Earth. But such was Ptolemy's reputation, the mistake long survived the decline of Greece. Astronomy had entered the Dark Ages. In Central America, Mayan astronomers who built step pyramids had a calendar of 584 days. It was based on the cycle of the planet Venus, worshipped here as a Mayan god. With Nicolaus Copernicus came enlightenment. He resurrected the theory of planets orbiting the sun. But with the church clinging to an earth-centered view, the ideas of Copernicus, a Polish cleric, weren't published until 1543, after his death. Enter Tycho Brahe, the Danish astronomer, who proved in 1577 this comet was farther away than the moon. Brahe lost part of his nose in a duel and wore a golden prosthetic. It didn't hinder a brilliant career. 
His precise observations established a real understanding of how the planets orbit the Sun. Working with Brahe, the German Johannes Kepler defined three laws of planetary motion. The first was that planets move around the Sun in ellipses, not circles. The second was that orbital speed varies. The planet travels fastest when nearest the Sun and slowest when farthest away. His third law was that planets orbit slower and slower the more distant they are from the Sun. And here, with Earth's orbit overtaking that of Mars, Kepler explained those retrograde loops. Pisa, where the great Italian mathematician and astronomer first worked, Galileo Galilei. In 1608, he turned the telescope, a Dutch invention weaker than modern binoculars, to the sky. He found moons around Jupiter and craters on our moon. Galileo saw the phases of Venus and angered the church with his sun-centered views. In the late 17th century, the English genius Isaac Newton split sunlight into the colors of the rainbow, a spectrum. He developed the reflecting telescope using mirrors rather than lenses to collect and focus light. And Newton worked out gravity, a force of attraction between all bodies. It explained Kepler's laws and modern astronomy was born. In 1781, William Herschel discovered the planet Uranus. And through a telescope he built in England, Herschel mapped the Milky Way. He deduced it was the sideways view of a galactic disk. But not until the mid-19th century did the aristocrat Lord Ross reveal the spiral structure of galaxies. He made this sketch of the Whirlpool Galaxy from his castle in Ireland. There, he had a telescope, for half a century, the world's biggest. The late 19th century saw two developments. One was spectroscopy, first demonstrated by Newton. Light from celestial objects could be analyzed to show their chemical composition. The other was photography, recording comets and mapping stars. A new century, and in 1917, this telescope, the 100-inch Hooker, opened at Mount Wilson, California. Through it, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble made a profound discovery from the spectra of galaxies. They were all rushing away from each other. The universe was expanding. And peering even deeper, in 1947, the first five-meter telescope, the Hale, confirmed the expansion. Simultaneously, radio astronomy began, the start of observation in wavelengths other than light. With the space age came observatories in orbit. Free of atmospheric interference, they could peer in infrared, ultraviolet and X-rays. The Hubble Space Telescope provided a similar clear eye for optical astronomy. Hubble images were stunning, and they were captured by a new breed of highly sensitive electronic detector, the CCD, or charge-coupled device. Chile, South America, a mountaintop in the Andes. Four telescopes that can link as one to form the VLT, or Very Large Telescope, the latest in optical astronomy. Despite their ground base, these instruments rival Hubble with image quality, each 8.2-meter mirror providing enormous light grasp. The VLT collects these images via new technologies, active optics and adaptive optics. They compensate for telescope movements and our shimmering atmosphere. 21st century tools in the progress of astronomy.